Hey, so um, I want to just give a brief example of um, how to use triggers. I probably showed it before, or um, there's a lot of tutorials online already uh, about it, but I thought I wanted it in my channel as well, and maybe explain a few things uh, in the process of creating the trigger. So basically, triggers are normally used for um, um, anything like doors or opening doors or closing doors or spawning things and destroying things. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna give a quick example by removing the door rather than opening it, uh, just for the fun of it. So basically, you want to start with having some kind of um, visual feedback for the player. Something that will make the player push the button or whatever you're planning on doing. You could have it invisible, obviously, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm calling it uh, trigger area. And I want to make sure it's small. Okay, and then I want to make sure it's a bit bigger, like such. Uh, I want to make sure it has a red color. And then I will duplicate it, Control D, and I will put it back up as one. I will hold on the V letter, and I will snap it over the trigger plate. I rename this box into trigger um, sensor or something. Enter. And I will click on is trigger, which makes basically means that it doesn't have a collision anymore. We can walk through it. And I want to turn off mesh render because I don't want them to actually see the hidden trigger. And we put the trigger sensor and the trigger area just so it's easy to move them if I want to copy paste the code later on. So basically now I have something. Obviously if I click play nothing's gonna happen as it's just visual so far. Now in trigger sensor I'm using Playmaker. I want to right click and add FSM. I want to rename the FSM into something that makes sense. Um, let's say I want to do. Uh, hold on a little bit to phone call. Okay. Where we are we? So we're going to make the trigger. And basically, we have to have a logic and a thought process and a breakdown structure saying. What do you want? Why do you want it? What kind of actions do you might need? So basically, the idea here is we want the player to step on this uh, trigger, this platform, and we want something to happen. And what we want to happen is we want to remove the door. That's it. We want to remove the door. So I'm going to show you how we can do that. Uh, naming conventions and having a good habit of naming things is a good idea. Called the uh, playmaker FSM move door. I will call the first state uh, detect collision. I will use an action called trigger event. Uh, I will have on trigger enter. That basically means when a player enters the trigger, then something happens. On trigger stay means if you're on the trigger inside a green cube, something happens. On trigger exit, that means when you leave the trigger, something happens. In this case, for now, we want something to happen when you enter the trigger. The collision tag, we want it to be player. I've already added an FPS controller with the tag player, which comes with the unity. Now we want an event. Right now it says there's no event to send. So we know we want an event, and I know I want to call it uh, um, remove door 
and I want to add a transition remove door and you see it pops up here the event called remove door and I want to activate the remove door as a send event when the player enters the tree that means when the player enters this green cube it will register it it will send an event remove door but right now it doesn't go anywhere so we want to left click it hold down control and we want to make sure that this new state does something in this case we want to remove the door uh, I'm going to pause a bit and turn off my uh, sky, uh, steam a little bit okay so uh, on this first one we're detecting collision on the second one we want something else to happen uh, in this case we want to remove the door so there are many ways to remove something or destroy something uh, let's have a look. Um, we can have, let's call this state um, remove door. For now, it might change, we'll see. So it's a remove door, and we want to have an action that is destroy. I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it. Uh, destroy object and if I click play uh, and go into the trigger it says detect collision and it says remove door you can uh, you see it down here it's green around here so it's already detected and it's moved over to remove door and it says on the screen here remove door but door is still there so let's have a look the remove door that's because we haven't picked a game object so let's pick the door like this and now I pick the door so it should remove the door when I enter the trigger so let's try that out there we go the door is removed so now you learn how to remove something from the game but what if you wanted it to come back if you wanted to come back uh, what happens when you use destroy object it is removed from the game if you look on the top left it says door up here it says f i will door 03 and if i go back and i enter you will see it, it's removed from the game as uh, as a object game object so if you want to have the door back is a bit more tedious I would say basically you want to have something called create object and here you want to choose the, first you want to make sure you have a transition and after we have removed the door we want to detect if the player leaves the green cube and you basically use the same trigger event. I copy paste this, Control C and Control V. I change it from trigger enter to trigger exit, and I create a new event calling uh, create door. And then I choose the event create door. I right click at tradition create door, and I send it to the state called create object. Basically, what's going to happen now? Let's click play and just check the playmaker interface. So I'm detecting the collision. I'm inside the collision. I'm leaving the collision, and you see it went all the way to create object. But you will see the door isn't back yet. So let's have a look. Basically, we want to make sure that the on trigger exit sends information to create door. In here we haven't stated what we want to create. Now if I drag the door that's already in the game nothing's gonna happen for two reasons. One because I haven't specified a spawn point or where I want it so it's being uh, created uh, somewhere else but in this case it's not being created at all because I'm creating something uh, I'm creating from the game object that's in the scene 
but if you remember we removed it from the scene so by the time I reach this state create object it's trying to spawn a game object from the scene that no longer exists so let's try again and it's still not gonna work but let's just double check that I'm uh, claiming the right stuff I'm holding on V I'm snapping this empty game object to the door because I want uh, the door to be spawned there but I'm gonna put it a bit in front just to see if the door actually pops up I'm gonna re rename this empty game object spawn point gonna go back to the trigger center create object change to yellow and I will pick spawn point and then we can try again and see what happens okay so I'm leaving it says create object all the states are working but nothing's happening in terms of creating the door and if you look here it says game object none because the object we wanted was removed from the um, the game so we want to click this circle and we're going to go to assets and we want to write down door 03 and now we're using from the project folder we're using an asset from the project folder door 03 which is a prefab we're using the prefab called door 03 and that's why prefabs are important and that's normally what you want to do when you're creating new objects is you want to take it from the project folder and not from the scene so now we try again there you go we now created the door and we removed the door but you will also notice that in this case the door is still there and it's not placed correctly so let's see if we can try and figure out how to do this first what we probably noticed is the spawn point if I add it around here and I click play it should more or less spawn and the new door not the same door right there and you will see on the left side it now says door clone because it's not the same door it's a new door so it's not under here anymore fine but the door still remains there once I leave the platform or come back on that's because once we create the object we are not stating that we should go back to detecting whether the player is on the trigger or not so we want to just do the standard default finished so the minute we create a new door we want to go back to detect collision and we want to detect if the player is on the trigger or not yet again so let's see what happens there we go so now basically we are creating the door and if you're paying attention to the left there's something weird you're seeing he's continuing to creating the door on top of each other on top of each other on top of each other giving us way too many doors so there's a drawback for this that's because every time we go back in this loop we are not specifying which door to destroy and that's one of the reasons in this case I wouldn't recommend using a destroyed door and spawn it back because you have to continue building the system up to keep track of everything and to keep track of everything you normally want to make sure that when you create an object like F5 World Door you create a game object and you call it door you store the door in store object and when you remove the door you want to remove the door called uh, game object door but it's still not gonna work so it's detecting everything and it, it's uh, 
creating and removing that specific door that we are adding you can see the clone here but you also see because I did that it's no longer removing the door I want to remove so there are many approaches to handling this I could go back to uh, what I originally did or I could just copy paste it And I could simply say, I do want to destroy this, but I also want to check for something else. Let's try this one. That was removed, a new door that I added. And now you will see that now when it's continuing, it's now looking for that specific new door, the new game object. Because when we created it, we made sure that we stored the information in a variable game object called door. So every time we want to remove that said door, it will remove that specific door and not continue to spawn and remove and spawn and remove. So that's one way of doing it. But in my case, uh, and my intention for what I'm going to do uh, once I close the the, the video is I don't want to remove and add something from the game I kind of just want to disable them visually and then enable them rather than having to meddle with all of these codes and saying I want this and that so let's turn this one off and let's create a new player FSM I'm going to call it a disable door click edit and we're going to do almost the same things but this time we're going to do trigger event as usual on trigger enter we want to detect for the player we want an event that says disable and we pick disable we don't really need to store at the moment and we want this is called disable this is where we disable the door and we want to call this one enable because we want to enable also on this side so we want another event called enable just so we know what information goes where when we make this blue and we can make this green so once we go into the trigger again let's click play and we double check if it detects it everything is in order then once we get in disabled state we want to use something called um, set property which is a very powerful uh, action which can uh, control a lot of objects uh, game object settings so we want to pick the one door that's already in the game rather than spawning new ones and clones we want to click on active and we want to make sure that it becomes uh, deactivated uh, when we go there over the green detection so I'm going I'm stepping over and it's now deactivated so it's still in the game it's still being processed somehow and you will see on the top left that it's still in the list so we're going to get exactly the same door that originally was in the game and we want to do the same once we leave the trigger trigger exit we want to enable so when we get here we want to have set property and we want to make sure active so if we click play and you will see it's using what's actually happening is that it's detecting the door and then it's disabling the door so if I do this and I click on the door you will see it's disabled up here and this disabled everything in the game object I could have chosen just to turn off the mesh renderer if I wanted to uh, but still have a collision so we wouldn't see the door but we wouldn't get through it or I could decide to turn out the collision if I wanted to and keep the visual part so you would see the door but you would still go through it. In this case I disable everything. 
So when I come back, you see on top top uh, right, next to the name, it's coming back and forth, so on and off. So that's basically how uh, one way of using trigger, one way of spawning something, destroying something, disabling something, and enabling something. So hope it was useful. Do let me know if you need some other tutorials. Thank you very much.